with over 5.5 million people living in the GTA who come from a multitude of different countries, this is one of the most multicultural cities in the world. Torontonians have unique stories to tell, and what better way to showcase that than through the eyes of an artistic lens. Everyone has a story. Everyone who migrated somewhere, there's their story there. You know, and if you've lived um, 30 years, 50 years, you have something that connects you to your past. Colin Boyd Schaefer is a photographer who wants to showcase Toronto's diversity one snapshot at a time. He's been busy taking portraits of people from over 190 countries who now call the GTA home. Hi, my name is Helen Liu and I'm from Hanoi, Vietnam. I looked at his website and I saw the photos and everybody walking by you on the street has their own story of some sort and the fact that everybody, you can find someone from all over the world here. And so I just really wanted to be part of it right away. Come, come out, actually. The project is called Cosmopolis Toronto, and Helen is one of more than 100 participants who volunteered to be a part of the photo series. The word Cosmopolis, uh, it means basically a city uh, with people from many countries. Toronto is a Cosmopolis, if, if not the most Cosmopolis of Cosmopolises. How would you feel about being right there and then you've got... I. Sure, it's funny, it, yeah. It's well, it's funny. also interesting that you're a vegetarian. <laughs> yeah. We can put that as part of the story. Yeah. I mean, I have no, yeah, it's fine to me because okay. this is what uh, I grew up with. Uh, we came to Canada in 1979 and moved to London, Ontario first. And then in the early 80s, we moved to Toronto. Uh, we left as refugees from Vietnam um, because of complicated but ethnic persecution. My, my dad's side of the family is Chinese and my mom's side is Vietnamese. It's stories like Helen's and a keen interest in migration that inspired the project for Colin. Along with gallery exhibitions and plans to publish a book, the series of portraits can be seen at CosmopolisToronto.com, where those who wish to participate can also apply. The website's easy to use. Uh, there's a basic Google map and you have a maple leaf on each country where I have a participant from. And then uh, you have their stories and the photos and so on. Um, and if you, if you want to participate in the project, there's just a, a, a tab at the top that says participate. All of the countries that I'm missing, I keep updating regularly. In order to streamline the project, Colin chose to focus his lens on one individual per country. Each person is then asked to choose a place that's special to them where the portrait will be taken. So we lived, I think it's this building actually. Like just, I think it's this one. I chose this neighborhood because this is actually the place that we lived, my family lived when we first moved to Toronto. Uh, we lived on Gerard Street. Um, not very long, but it just, I have many memories from my childhood here. Where are you? That's me. Oh, okay. Two years old. For their photo shoot, each participant is also asked to bring with them an object that connects them to their roots. So that photograph was taken um, right before we left Vietnam and recently I, I asked my mom why my grandfather wasn't in it and she told me that he was upset that she was leaving, that we were leaving and so he chose not to be in the photo. Um, so it's the last photo basically that they took together as a family before we moved away. And at that time, actually, there was no thought of ever returning because when you leave as a refugee, you might never get to return to your country. So it was just a goodbye at that time and maybe I'll never see you again. It's stories like these that highlight the common experience Colin's subjects share. The woman from Bulgaria chose a picture that she has on her dresser of her grandparents who, you know, basically uh, devoted a big portion of their life to raising her. And my participant from Iraq, she uh, chose a picture of herself at the age of five, I believe, in a refugee camp. This is her, you know, memory. And she says, like, this is, this is a life that I lived and I can't forget about it. I think sometimes we maybe come to a point in our, our lives where we can realize that there's there's value in not hiding you know not hiding some of those memories hi my name is paul jackson and i'm originally from cape town south africa 
back. Okay, so we'll take some pictures of you here and yeah. then we'll try some in the garage. The reason why I came to uh, Toronto, Canada is because my country was going through a political turmoil. And as you well know, South Africa was synonymous with the word apartheid. So with the political unrest and uh, just very hard for me to see a future in the country. I was fortunate enough to have a sister that already migrated here a couple of years early on and she eventually sent for me when the country was pretty much in a chaotic state. It looks nice. I have a very strong connection to my sister Alice um, and I believe that the reason why I'm here today was because she had seen uh, the opportunity and made the opportunity available for me to come to this great country and I thought it would be symbolic for us to have a picture taken today of her hands with my hands representing you know where I've come from and who I came to when I came to this country. If you talk to any um, immigrant or somebody that's migrated from another country they will tell you that the number one reason why families come to this country is to provide a future for their children because I see the opportunities and when I see my children playing with children of different colors, different cultures, different religions, it tells me that I'm in the right place. Look right here. <laughs> Hi, I'm Maria Wong and I'm originally from Managua, Nicaragua. I eat at Bay Managua quite often. It's the only Nicaraguan restaurant in Toronto and quite possibly in Canada. I've lived in different cities in Canada and this is the first Nicaraguan restaurant I've found and so I enjoy coming here. We arrived in Canada in 1980. Eight. Um, I was just turning four years old and like a lot of other Nicaraguans who were fleeing the country at the time we decided to stop in Canada. So during the 20th century there was a lot of Asian immigration to Latin America. My grandfather was one of those people who immigrated from Hong Kong to the Atlantic coast of Nicaragua. Right and many of the people that I'm photographing their families already migrated to where they were born and then now they've migrated uh, to here. And so, in the case of Maria, um, you know, there's, there, there's a complexity there in regards to her background. A little bit lower. The dolls are Goguense dolls, and the Goguense is a satirical drama coming out of Nicaragua in the 16th century. And so that to me is significant because of the vibrant cultural and rich um, folkloric traditions coming out of Nicaragua. What I wanted to do is, is, is show the complexity of uh, what, you know, what a Canadian look, looks like. I definitely think it already has shown this, uh, that there is no such thing as Canadian looking. 